Hello, I am Professor Srinidhi. Welcome to the first session of Ablative Materials. In this session, we are going to discuss about ablative materials, ablative process, working, thermal parameters, history, ablative material compositions, recent researches, advantages, limitations and applications in aerospace. Advances in aeronautics and astronautics have been closely associated with significant increase in operational temperatures in chemical combustion systems. Flame temperatures are approaching around 3000 degrees Celsius and higher. Gas temperatures at least twice that high are being encountered in the boundary layer of hypersonic atmospheric entry vehicles. These extremely high temperature conditions may lead to thermal destruction of an exposed vehicle or a component unless suitable protection is provided. Protection of a structure in a very high temperature environment may be accomplished with ease through the use of a new class of engineering materials. These thermally protective materials are known as ablators or they are also called as ablative materials. They are applied to the exterior of a load bearing structure and thereby isolating it from the hyperthermal environment. The structure is thus maintained near its initial temperature at which it exhibits optimum strength characteristics. Ablation is means of thermal protection based on physiochemical transformations of solid substances by convective or radiation heat flow. In other words, ablation is energy management through material consumption. Ablative materials are unique in that they accommodate virtually any temperature or heat flux condition automatically control the surface temperature, greatly restrict any internal flow of heat and expend thousands of energy for each pound of material. These capabilities are the result of one regulating orderly and gradual removal of exposed surface material which takes place during interaction of the high temperature environment with the material. Ablative process. Material ablation in high temperature environments is a subject of great complexity and as a consequence is not too well understood. Certain chemical and physical aspects of the process have been identified. However, uh, they shall be given for the case of an ablation, ablating vitreous fiber reinforced plastic. Initially, heat incident to the surface is absorbed and then conducted into the material substrate. Heat penetration proceeds at a low rate due to the very low thermal conductivity of the ablator. The surface temperature thus rises rapidly and thermal degradation begins in some form. Organic components of the composite vaporize into numerous gaseous products of varying molecular weights often leaving behind a residual char layer. Thermochemical and mechanical attack of this porous carbonaceous structure results in surface recession thus exposing the reinforcing fibers to the hot gas stream. Fusion of the fibers occur and the molten material covers the surface either as a film or as droplets. This melt is partially vaporized and the remainder is convicted along the surface under the influence of the external forces of gas pressure and shear. 
ablative degradation of the reinforced plastic is illustrated in the figure 1. Figure illustrates the ab ablative degradation of reinforced plastics. Damage to the material is noted in four distinct layers. First, surface material has been removed by the combined action of thermal, chemical and mechanical effects. On the ablated surface is a thin film and several droplets of melted glass which have been formed from the reinforcing fibers. Under this surface layer, a porous carbonized material reinforced with residual glass fibers is evident. The volatile loose layer is adjacent to the char layer and has been design designated as such because of the slight loss of organic resin. The virgin material lies beneath these damaged zones and has experienced little or almost no rise in temperature. Working of an ablator Working of an ablator is illustrated in the second figure, the figure shown in the screen. Hot gases in the boundary layer convectively heat the surface. Next, radiant flux from the shock layer heat the surface. Then, heat is either re-radiated out or conducted into the surface. The polymer in the composite begins to decompose and pyrolysis gases are formed. Carbon remains and char layer begins to form. The thermal front moves through the material causing more decomposition. The pyrolysis gases formed deeper in the composite are at a lower temperature than the near surface char. So as they flow through the char, they cool it. The char surface reacts with the boundary layer and material is removed, causing recession. So react the char layer reaction may be oxidation, sublimation and anything else. And recession is caused maybe either exothermic or endothermic. As the pyrolysis and gases formed at the surface blow into the boundary layer, they thicken it and reduce the convective heating. Next, thermal parameters of ablation. During high temperature exposure, an ablative material is generally able to absorb, dissipate, and block for each pound of material. This phenomenal capability is due to the various thermal accommodation parameters which function during the material ablation. These parameters are sensible temperature rise of the ablator and its pyrolytic products account for some heat absorption the magnitude of which is generally small. Additional heat is expended by chemical reactions of thermally degraded material such as cleavage of chemical bonds. Various endothermic phase changes take place. Some of these energy absorbing processes are depolymerization, melting, vaporization, sublimation and many more. A small amount of energy may be transported to another physical location by mechanical shearing of surface materials from the ablating surface. Likewise, any surface melt on the ablator may be removed by imposing forces of the environment. The gases formed in the material substrate are heated to a higher temperature as they percolate to the surface. Due to their high heat capacity, 
they are able to absorb a large amount of heat by sensible temperature rise. The newly formed gases are ejected into the adjacent boundary layer, greatly reducing the effective temperature level of the environment. Consequently, less heat is transferred to the ablating surface. Energy is dissipated by surface radiation with the rate of heat transport depending upon the temperature and emittance of the ablator. Additional heat will be radiated into the material substrate provided the material is radiation transparent or semi-transparent. The amount of heat expended by each of the above processes depends critically upon the nature of the heating environment and the material being considered. History of ablators The first known ablative material were meteorites. These thermally degraded bodies come to us from space were indeed a subject of great curiosity since they have demonstrated in principle the utility of aerodynamic ablation for thermal protection of atmospheric entry objects. Perhaps in these bodies were hidden the secrets to successful re-entry of man-made vehicles. Man-made ablative materials were discovered only a decade ago. Various techniques were being explored to protect and insulate structural metals while exposed to a hot rocket exhaust. Certain reinforced plastics and ceramics were seen to exhibit remarkable durability during short time hyperthermal exposure. In addition, the high temperature of environment were, was restricted to the surface region of the ablating material. The next several years, thousands of different material compositions and constructions were characterized and evaluated on a trial and error basis. The high temperature facilities used were various combustion torches, small rocket motors, arc plasma jets, pebble bed heaters, arc imaging furnaces and others. Meanwhile, ablative theories were being formulated and experimentally verified. These theories helped to explain material behavior at very high temperatures and provided some guidance for their engineering applications. Various types of materials were investigated and plastics, ceramics, in homogeneous and composite compositions were found most promising. Composite construction was most versatile since the unique properties of individual components were incorporated into a single material system. Furthermore, it was possible to adjust these material components to obtain the desired balance of properties and to tailor them to a specific environment. By these trial and error and systematic material investigations, wide variety of ablative material have been identified. So homogeneous ablators, you have plastics, ceramics, under this you have many more like polytetrafluoroethylene and many more. Under ceramics you have fused silica, zirconia, magnesia, expanded ceramics. Under composite ablators, you have reinforced plastics, reinforced ceramics, impregnated systems. These are some of the ablative materials and its compositions. This list is not an all-inclusive one, but it identifies materials which have exhibited relatively good performance in several different hyperthermal environments. Some of the recent researches on ablation or ablators. 
Although great advances have been made in ablative materials, our, our understanding of these materials in very high temperature environments is inadequate. Numerous problems continue to plague us that by restricting new developments, some of these important problem areas are under research by many different research facilities. Some of the research areas of ablative materials are ablation theories, mechanisms of ablation, elimination of material deficiencies, synthesis and fabrication of new ablators, materials characterization, materials and environment interactions, applications engineering. Next, some of the advantages and limitations of ablative materials. Advan ablative materials have been widely used in heat protective systems of hypersonic atmospheric vehicles, rocket propulsion systems, various thermal barriers and other high temperature applications. This extensive acceptance in the aerospace systems is due to the unique combination of properties and characteristics offered by the material. There are some major advantages of ablative materials and uh, twofold limitations. Ablative materials absorb and dissipate high heat loads with minimum surface erosion and provide excellent thermal insulation of the substrate. They have no upper service temperature limit and they can accommodate virtually any operational temperature by controlled material degradation. They are usually light and vary from about 10 pounds per cubic foot for foam plastic to over 200 pounds per cubic foot for metal fiber reinforced ceramics. Organic ablators inherently possess good resistance to both thermal and mechanical shock. But ceramic ablators are shock sensitive. This material deficiency has been greatly reduced by the use of fiber or honeycomb reinforcements. Ablative materials are readily available and are non-strategic. They are relatively relative costs are low. Design with ablative material is not any simple task, but it certainly involves less complexity than with other thermal protection schemes. Lastly, ablative materials degrade in a self-regulating and orderly manner, thus eliminating any requirement for an active controlled cooling system. The thermal efficiency and effectiveness of an ablator is reduced with increasingly higher mechanical forces. A second limitation of these materials is their service time dependency. Optimum per performance is generally obtained for minutes of operations or less with reduced performance with increasing exposure time. Some of the applications or some of the typical uses are the utility of ablative materials for thermal protection of structural element has been demonstrated experimentally in a wide variety of laboratory generated hyperthermal environments. Ultimately, it becomes necessary to verify their performance in actual applications to prove their effectiveness and reliability to confirm theoretical predictions of material performance and to provide a sound basis for the selection of optimum material composition and constructions. Two of the most heralded applications of ablative materials are discussed in the session. They are 
re-entry heat shielding and protection from hot rocket exhaust environments hypersonic atmospheric entry one of the most difficult and challenging problems of aerospace flight is the thermal protection of a vehicle as it enters hypersonically into a planetary atmosphere unless isolated from this very high temperature environment the vehicle will likely be thermally destroyed in a manner similar to that of a meteor entering the earth's atmosphere next is rocket propulsion exhaust the containment and control of hot combustible gases in rocket propulsion systems is necessary for thrust purposes these propellant gases constitute a severe engineering environment since they are they are generally characterized by high temperatures high mechanical forces chemical corrosion and occasionally particle erosions ablative material have been used successfully in propulsion systems of both solid and liquid fuel rockets the most notable achievements have been in solid propellant motors wherein the nozzle silver insulation liner and potting compounds are composed of ablative insulative materials these ablative components comprise between 20 to 40 percent of inert weight of the missile so this is the first session of ablative materials so in this session we have discussed about the ablative materials introduction to these kind of materials ablative process the working of an ablator thermal parameters of ablation history of ablators some of the uh, material compositions then we have discussed about research programs or research on ablative materials then we have discussed advantages and limitations of ablative materials and then we have discussed about the applications of ablative materials mainly the two applications or typical uses that is hypersonic atmospheric entry and during rocket propulsion exhaust so if you have any doubt clarification suggestion comment below uh, and if you are gonna uh, learn more about the ability materials or material science subscribe thank you